Today's video is going to be about repairing a Pancolar, a Carl Zeiss F1.8 Pancolar. Now this Pancolar was bought on eBay. It was bought as not working parts. Uh, and the reason given was because something is wrong with the aperture mechanism. And the first thing I notice when I get this is that the pin, the aperture pin at the back is missing and I noticed something else which wasn't described. I noticed that the front element, the glass on this, is is a bit scratched. It's not very good. Now, luckily for me, I have a box of spare parts which contains a lot of Pancolar pieces. Now, I bought this because I was hoping that there'd be enough parts to make a Pancolar in there. It was, it was sold as a disassembled Pancolar that the person couldn't put back together, but it turns out that it's in terrible condition. I didn't pay very much for that, I paid a very, very small amount. But this Pancolar today on eBay, um, yeah, I paid, I paid a reasonable amount for this. It, it was just below the sort of uh, average sort of selling price for these. So it wasn't really expensive and it wasn't very super cheap either. But of course the reason I bought this was because I wanted to make a pixel valve adapter to go on the back of it. And um, well, it would be nice if it worked too, so I'm pretty sure I can fix it. I'm just going to unscrew the back and have a look. Now I have been online already because I've been waiting for this thing, to, while I've been waiting for this thing to arrive, I've been looking on the internet, looking at the mechanism for Pancolars and and although I haven't got a full Pancolar, I have kind of a rough idea of how it should look inside. And I, I know that they have a clutch mechanism, not a clutch mechanism, no, uh, like a cable that drives the um, aperture, which a cable that works in a similar way to the brake cable on a bicycle. Um, now, luckily for me, there's no extra parts on the back of that metal case. Now the problem I think is over here because the description on the internet was that something looks to be replaced the wrong way around and, and that thing there looks like it should connect to the lever that goes down into the lens. And looking on my other Pancolar I can see that this lever does look slightly different, it's bent in a different direction but it doesn't look like it was placed upside down. It looks like something inside the lens has actually bent that part. Now, that could be a symptom of something else. It could be that something else is broken in the lens, a stop or maybe a screw. Um, so I'll have to be careful and kind of play with this before I, I really delve into it. Now, it's important to try everything out, play with it, because if something else has gone, I kind of need to visualize and kind of see how how the mechanism is supposed to work. Now, I've never seen I've never never worked on a Pancolar before. Really. Not a complete one. And the first thing I notice is that it's definitely something something to do with this little lever here, which must be the aperture control. And of course, the reason it's not working when I moved it is because the pin needs to be depressed. So you can imagine the back being on this and the pin being there pin would need to be depressed for that to work. Or, of course, the switch would need to be thrown, which that little uh, wheel would, would uh, compress. But, luckily for me, I think everything looks okay. It just looks like we need to replace this one part, which is great. I can't understand how this happened, though. That's a bit of a mystery. Now, sometimes when I'm replacing these things, sometimes it becomes obvious only after the lens is back together and I try to use it. Sometimes something goes crunch. And that's that's when I re realise sometimes that, that it's not quite right or there's another problem that's a bit deeper. And at the moment, we can only just hope. So the, the problem looks obvious. 
but will it? Will it be simple? And these these screws can be quite tight. I think sometimes they actually glue them on as well, so it's it's uh, it keeps them in place. But it does make it feel quite tight. So you need a really good fitting screwdriver and a little bit of pressure. So fitting this thing, I need to clean it first. But while I'm here looking at this thing, I'm. I'm pondering how it should go. Should it go over the cable or should it go under the cable? Now, my feeling is that it should go underneath that cable. I don't really need to give it a clean, but I think it's nice to give it a clean because, you know, while I'm there and while I'm able to do it, it, it makes no real difference to uh, the, the build, but it just makes it look nice. You know, that, that was quite heavily dirty and tarnished from my lens I mean it's, it's a box of bits that literally sits in the shed so I think it's nice to just to polish things up it'll it'll probably help it sit nice and flat too now getting this in position and getting getting the screws in there can be really tricky because I've got to put the screws into a recess so what I'm going to do is use a, a smaller tipped screwdriver, a screwdriver bit, and just place it in there as a holding mechanism while I'm screwing the other side in. And of course, once that other screw is in, it's not going to move. But doing this without holding it in place somehow would, uh, would mean that trying to get that screw in there can sometimes jiggle about and go all over the place. Now, if I drop the screw inside that lens, it can be tricky to get it back out. But everything's gone in as expected. The little arm is in place. It's connected to its shaft and you can see it moving. Now the big question I've got in my head at this moment is whether this will continue to work normally when I focus because when I focus I'm going to be moving that lens assembly in and out so I need to really test this at full infinity focus and full uh, at maximum, each maximum point I think everything does seem to work fine and I can imagine that that wouldn't have any problems. The only thing left to do really is replace the pin and I do have one here. But since I'm not going to be using the this M42 adapter, I'm probably I'm just going to leave that I think. I'm not going to replace that just yet. Because I'm, no, I'm never going to use that pin, really. Now the only time that pin is going to be useful really is if I end up selling the lens uh, and whenever I sell a pixel valve adapter um, uh, already connected to a lens, when I, when I sell a lens with one of these pixel valve adapters, I'll always include the original M42 mount as well, just in case the next person wants to revert back. So it's definitely going to be useful. But it fits and it works. You know, I can, I can see that it it's all there. And that would, this ring is the switch that changes it from auto to manual. So when I'm designing this pixel valve adapter I need to make sure that there is a depression or a protrusion rather on the actual back of the pixel valve adapter that pushes this down inside the lens so that it's permanently set to manual.
Now these Pankalar lenses, they're quite expensive generally. I see a lot of them on eBay for over a hundred pounds. And it it doesn't seem to make a lot of difference which version you get, the the zebra version or the black version. They're, they're usually both over a hundred pounds. But occasionally, sometimes, you can find them for around about forty pounds uh, if you're really lucky. So it might be a time of year, a kind of seasonal sort of low sometimes that, that causes the price to be cheap or it could be that there's something wrong with the lens but I have seen a, a, a great variety in, in prices and I know on eBay you know you, you can't really go by the seller's price because you can ask anything on eBay you should really only go for the the sold price because on eBay you have a, a drop down or a little tick box on the uh, left hand side which allows you to see the previous sold items prices Now everything looks okay, everything feels okay, the the lens is pretty much working. So all I've got to do really is, is put the screws back in and test it out. Now I, I do have a Nikon adapter, one of those metal screw on ones which, which will work on the camera but of course I'm not going to be able to get infinity focus using one of those. But it will let me do some close up photography. And I'm dying to try this out because everyone raves about how good Pancolars are. And I don't know at this stage whether there's any difference between this Pancolar and the black version. Now, I found out that the Tessars, the the Zebra version, was actually better than the black version. When I of the ones that I actually had. Um which surprised me. So there we are. It's back together again. And it works. It works really nicely. There's no oil on the blades. It looks fairly clean. And that's the end of my part one. So the lens is fixed. It all works. Now I need to go on to the boring bit. We need. To, I need to replace this front element. And while I'm there, I'm going to clean everything up and uh, tidy it tidy all the dust and things now I don't know if you can see this but these are actually scratches on the lens itself but the seller didn't mention anything about that it probably wouldn't have been much of an issue anyway to be honest now I don't have a spanning wrench I use my calipers engineering calipers um, they're used for measuring uh, and I use them extensively with designing stuff like CAD parts and things like that but they are so useful as a spanning wrench too I don't know if anyone else uses them like that it's just just me maybe so the inside lens actually looks quite clean Again, I'm going to be using the hydrogen peroxide. It's just water and 3% hydrogen peroxide, so it's very weak, but it's it's strong enough to kill any fungus. Now, sometimes, of course, you might need to use alcohol wipes or something a little bit stronger because sometimes there might be oil in there. There might be all kinds of debris in there. Um, it's just generally I think for dust this is great for dust and great for preventing any kind of fungus because sometimes you can't really see if there's fungus growing at the edges now I'm not going to take all of these lenses out I'm not going to take this lens out so I'm, I'm just saturating it with hydrogen peroxide that'll seep into the corners that'll kill any fungus that might potentially be there So this lens is actually in much better condition, this front element. And I'm, I'm wearing rubber gloves when I'm doing this because I find that if I do this with my bare fingers, 
it, condensation and actually um, grease from my fingers, it doesn't matter how much I wash them, it will always find its way onto the lens. But with rubber gloves, even if they're a little bit grubby, they're completely fine. So I'm paying attention to the quality of the parts as I remove them, because sometimes the, the, the parts that I'm taking off could be in better condition than the parts I'm going to be replacing them with. So, so I'm, I'm obviously going to choose the best parts overall to go into the actual lens. Don't worry, I will make use of that Pancolar assembly there. It's not going to go to waste. I will s just simply switch out the lenses. And I have some ideas for it because it's not, even though it was scratched, that lens that I'm replacing, it wasn't completely useless. You know, it, it was usable, I think. Now, the reason I didn't clean that is because I have actually cleaned this uh, other Pankalar element a few weeks ago using the same sort of techniques, the hydrogen peroxide, so I know it's absolutely clean. very nice. Now while I'm here I might as well do the back lens elements too because they're a collection of elements and that's usually where I find a lot of the fungus in these things. Now the front of this actually where the filter goes on there was a little dimple in that which I've hammered out uh, with a, a little rubber mallet but I had to do that in the shed so I didn't video that bit but that's the only bit that you're not seeing now this should be quite a straightforward fix I should be able to grip the back of that lens and just simply twist them out I shouldn't need to open this again and there we go, you can see that I'm, I'm twisting the whole thing out. Now, I hope the aperture blades don't fall out on me at this stage probably best to open them, make sure they're open wide or left in that position but you can actually clean them, I mean if you did find some oil on there all it takes is a little bud like this, a cotton bud and just a circular motion following the line of the, uh, the, the aperture blades and it's completely fine to do that of course it, the, the the cotton tip will absorb a lot of the um, the moisture from the oil, if there was any. So it's sometimes not necessary to completely strip down these lenses. Now I like to use a brush rather than a blower to get rid of the dust from inside these things. Now I find that if the, if the brush is good enough that it's not contaminated with any kind of oil or anything, then it, it should be completely fine. But sometimes with the blower, what I find is that the particles that are attached to the glass are electrically charged so they, they, they kind of stick there like static now these LED torches are fantastic they, they really show up all the imperfections in the glass So this whole element assembly here at the back 
needs to be removed. And the most important thing to remember is which way these glass elements are facing. Because if you do accidentally replace one of these and put it in the wrong way round, you will notice a very, very strange effect. Sometimes it's quite subtle, but sometimes it's quite obvious, but sometimes, and I have done this, I've put an element the wrong way round and I've not noticed for a few days. And I've used the lens and then all of a sudden I'm wondering why there's a, there's a funny chromatic aberration or a, a, a weird kind of effect happening. And it's easy to do because, you know, these, these glass elements, they look very similar from one side to the other. Now the back, the furthest most element is quite easy because obviously there's going to be wear on the outside of that lens, fingerprints and things like that. But you can't tell by looking at it which way that's supposed to be. So I place it down in the same orientation as it as it came out so with a bit of hydrogen peroxide over everything any any kind of fungus or stuff inside there is going to be completely killed off now I do it for the outside of the uh, the mount as well for the the screw or the uh, the fitting, if, if there's any oil or debris or anything in there, the cotton bud will remove it. Tweezers are very handy when you're doing this kind of work because it's so fiddly. I mean, I've I've been working on a, a Helios. 442 and the screws I was showing my wife the other day one of the screws fell and I was looking for it and there was a grain of sugar on the table and when I found the the screw it was about the same size as the grain of sugar my wife couldn't believe it Luckily for me, these, these elements look quite good. There's no fungus in these. Now, the back elements on my other Pankolau lens, the, the spare parts, now, they do have traces of fungus where the fungus has actually eaten into the coatings on the lens. Now, the glass is clean, uh, so I won't be replacing those ones with these ones because these are actually better. It just takes a long time sometimes and it's difficult when washing these things. Difficult because if you're a perfectionist you could really be washing these to infinity. But I don't believe that anyone can really clean these to a hundred percent unless unless they're sat in a vacuum room because there's dust everywhere all the time and even when you've cleaned this as soon as you've cleaned it and moved it there's dust flying around in the room so small that you can't see it attaching itself to the lens and that's what I like about the brush sort of um, technique because you can carry on brushing it and up until that moment where you turn it upside down and put it into the lens but even, even this way isn't perfect now you can use the tweezers as a kind of spanning wrench as well if you if you wedge your finger into it and it, it's one of those tools that you don't really use a lot of pressure with but if something if if, if something is is loosely held together then it can be it can be useful really useful because it's quite small and you can get into little little areas now I wouldn't be able to really tighten this up using the tweezers, but it's definitely good for placing something or just lightly, lightly moving something. And 
and as you can probably see if the camera's close enough it's really clean it's very 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 nice it looks it looks okay there's no there's no debris there's no smears smudges or anything else but my torch's battery is dying and I'll have to charge it I think there we go I've charged the torch and I'm back now when I'm hydrogen peroxing peroxiding these lenses I, uh, I also do around the edges where the opaque sort of cut would be uh, where it sits against the metal and I think a lot of the times if, if you've actually handled these things with your fingers uh, without a, a pair of gloves then some of that organic matter off your fingers dead skin that kind of thing can sometimes stay there and I think sometimes that actually causes the fungus so it's another reason why gloves are, are really the, the the way to go when you're cleaning lenses so it's almost ready to use It's all very simple, it's all fairly straightforward usually. If all the parts are present, if all the parts are there, then it should be fairly easy to, to work on. These old lenses, they're brilliant because they're made in such a way that, that allows you to have access to everything. They were much better built, much, way better than the modern lenses. I mean, the modern lenses that I find today, they're, they're made out of plastic and they're designed in such a way that, that kind of prevents you from from repairing to a certain extent I've just noticed something actually that's why I'm taking the back off this lens now I don't know if you've seen it but what I've actually done is notice that there's a ball bearing on the table now that ball bearing must have come from inside this lens and I know it's not the aperture ring ball bearing so it must be this it must be from this it's the selector switch for the manual and automatic and the ball bearing would normally fit in a tiny little hole at the side which contains a spring and some oil and there we go now these tweezers are slightly magnetic probably best not to use metal tweezers um, a cocktail stick would work just as well Now this can be a real pain when this happens a little ball falls inside the lens but with a delicate movement you can you can position it even if there is a slight magnetism on these things so this is something that happens quite frequently you know you put something together and you notice a spare screw or you notice a ball bearing or something like that right at the very end um, I, I find that sometimes and it's sometimes it's really irritating because you know it's the thing that fell off is deep inside or it, it can be frustrating sometimes but luckily that was a really quick and easy thing to fix wasn't it And I can feel it clicking there, so I, I know it's okay. I'll have to bear that in mind when I'm making a pixel valve adapter for this thing. 
Now, I think what I'm probably going to do is take some shots using the standard metal adapter, um, which will give me probably up to about three feet of range, maybe less than that perhaps, but I'll, I'll definitely be able to take some shots to show you what this is like. Or more like to show, to in, to get the enjoyment out of using it myself. I just can't wait. I just have to use this lens. I just can't wait for a pixel adapter. It's so exciting. So I'm trying this out, and it works perfectly now. So here's one of my first shots. What do you think? Is that a, a typical Pankolar look? It's definitely got character. Very interesting. I like it. This has got potential. No wonder these Pankolars are so expensive. And these aren't even well thought out shots. They just snaps around my kitchen. Anyway, I hope that was useful. I hope you enjoyed that episode of Pixel Valve and I hope that helps you with your lens. Um, for now, like, share, subscribe and if you've got any comments, anything that you can add or uh, anything, just let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.